Hey guys, before you enjoy this fun vlog with Nick Gillard, I've launched three new sabers on Theory Sabers. You're going to be greatly supporting the fan film, and I'm going to be choosing five people at random that, that grab a saber, and you're going to be watching a portion of Vader Episode 2 with me early. So that's going to be one of the perks. I'm just going to choose five people at random, and it should be out at the end of this year. So if you guys want to be entered into that contest, as well as grab yourself an awesome saber, we are having a big drop right now. Three sabers are available, three different ones, and each one has a different soundboard, if you so choose, if you so wish, depending on your price point and your interest. So go to theorysabers.com right now, or check me out on Theory Sabers at Instagram or on Instagram. Enjoy the video with Nick Gillard. <laughs> in the cab, about to go head there and uh, meet him for the first time, so pretty excited. Might as well get something. What's up guys? We're about to get some Mel's lunch. Diner. Mel's Diner. So, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you in a minute. So, Nick was telling me this place is actually connected to... It's connected to we are in Mel's Diner in Los Angeles. Here, you still hold it. You gotta start vlogging, man. I gotta get you uh, to the world. We are in Mel's Diner in Los Angeles. Sorry about, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> Mel's Diner in San Francisco was the original location for American Graffiti. So there is a Star Wars connection here. The theory is sticking something into the camera. I'm not sure what it is. It's got a little remote control. Yeah. Testing. It's <laughs> like we can hear it. It's been uh, really cool hanging out with Nick so far. It's like. It's like me meeting an old friend, it's weird. We've known each other forever. And I think I'm, I think even though I'm considerably older, I look about the same. You look about the same age. So <laughs> What are we going for? Orange, not orange spice, not sweet dreams. Oh, we're in trouble. Did you ever see the Spice Girls? No. I, my favorite was um, the one that wore the Union Jack, Jerry Hellion. Uh, Ginger Spice. Mm. Yeah, she was hot. So no black tea. My favorite was Baby Spice as a kid. I had photos of her everywhere. Yeah. Corn yeah. beef, with bits of potato. What is? It? See this? Yeah. This is corn beef patch. Sure, what's inside there? But it looks like corn beef, potato, and parsley. I reckon. Very nice. I don't even know what corn beef hash is. It's a Canadian thing. <laughs> Oh, and I just got some some bacon, potatoes, eggs. Yeah, you want some bacon? No, I'm good. Huh? Uh, yeah, so we're gonna eat up. <laughs> we're not gonna do the whole Instagram thing where we uh, where we eat and vlog. So see you in a minute. That was great as well. Wasn't it? I took Ray. I took Ray with me on Sleepy Hollow, like as a stump. Yeah. Perform. He did a good job. He doubled the headless horses. But anyway, while I was doing it, I got. Asked to be seen the Lord of the Lord, which I know really well. You know, I went and met Peter Jackson in London and his wife and a and producer, just a three of them. And you know what Peter Jackson looks like, he's a bit of a scrub. Yeah. And I was concerned, you know, so like, you know, talking about Lord of the Rings, which is my favourite book. And I thought they're not going to call this off. <laughs> the way they were talking yeah. about it. I seem to know, at that point, seem to know more about it than they did. And uh, I was also, uh, I'd also been offered sharks in New York. How oh, cool. And I took that. You took a shark? I took a shark and said, Over Lord of the Rings? I got it wrong. You know, I got it wrong. Peter Jackson did know what he was doing. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. Yep. He completely nailed yep. it. But, you know, that's the diff. That's how it works. You go in a... a you see Lord of the Rings, that massive production. I saw three guys in a room. 
you know, that didn't seem to so. But wasn't it being filmed the same time as episode two? Yeah. I wouldn't have been able to do episode two. So I'd have had to... So how did, how did, how did Christopher Lee go from... Well, it's different for them because to... they're only in... Oh, right. The acting part. Right, okay. You're on the job of the whole time. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah, so it meant I wouldn't have been able to do episode two, which wasn't a problem. I spoke to Rick McCallum and he said, go and do it, you know, and come back to yes. three. And I could have put my, left my guys on to. But anyway, I made the wrong choice, probably. I, I made the, I didn't make the wrong choice. You always made the right choice, but I made the wrong choice, I think, for what I'd like to have achieved on Lord of the Rings. You know, I... I had some fantastic ideas for Lord of the Rings. I also turned down Harry Potter. So <laughs> in the same year. Yeah, remind you, you told me this. Yeah. yeah, Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings in the same year. That was the best time for me growing up because it was the prequels, it was Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It yeah, all great movies. No, I don't think you could do that anymore. You can't. Yeah. It's all bullshit now. So then why did George leave all that stuff out? All the extra all those scenes that you had? Like with Yoda running along the wall, fighting City Is and... Um, I think who knows why how things get cut. But I think to second guess George is a mistake. I mean yeah, it obviously he's gonna get things wrong, but when you make stuff I'm sure you cut a whole load of stuff out. Sure. You know, that I'm sure a load that people would like to see. I know I do when I make movies and you know, some things have to go. Yeah. And also when you're making them, you, I was on a job recently and there were three action sequences in it. Big action sequences. But they didn't have the money. And I remember the producer going to the director and say, saying, think of it this way. You've got three children and you've got to kill one of them. Which one is it going to be? Oh. <laughs> That's how they do it. And so one of those scenes has to go. And if it has to go, then a whole load of other stuff associated with it will have to get cut out. So there's a lot of talk on the internet of a four-hour extended cut at Revenge of the Sith. Really? Oh. Does that exist? I would imagine there's a 10-hour extended cut. There's was hundreds of stuff that you shoot and doesn't go in there. Or everything that you see is much bigger. You know, get yeah. pegged right back. Why didn't we get any um, scenes of Hayden in uh, in the temple? Fuck, that would be so cool. He was there. I think when he came in the temple with the, when he killed the kids. Yeah, I don't mean more of that. I just mean like a little more of like you know fighting Cinderella. Too violent. It, it, we we did that fight the night before in his garage. And the little hologram thing. Yeah. And I really wanted it to be violent, like really violent. Yeah, he was choking out one girl and chopped the other one's head off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when we showed it to George, he felt it was too violent. And so he shrank it. It wasn't originally going to be that little hologram. No way. Yeah, so he said the only way I could show it. And you gotta shrink it right down so you can't really see it and we'll do it to we'll affect it. But we shot it full size, you know, and, yeah. and, and in fact when we shot it people, the crew because no one's seen it, they normally see us rehearsing, right. they seen it, they were like, Oh Jesus I mean, yeah. two young kids. One was Rick's daughter, Mousy. Okay. Rick and Callum's daughter, yeah, and then this kid um, from Byron Bay who was great fighter. But yeah, it, it was horrible. Stabbed her right through the throat. And now, yeah. and held on to the other one as he did. I saw that, yeah. yeah. Mm. No, it's all there. It'll all be there. Oh well, maybe one day. Mm -hmm. George will release something. Well, I don't know if he will, uh, though. Yeah, because. He probably hasn't got it anymore, has he? Well, did he ever, when he was trying to do episode 7, did he ever hit you up and say, hey, we're starting? No, he um, he always talked about, we talked about it, 9. Yeah. I think, I don't know what happened. I think he, sort of where I am now, I think he'd almost sort of had enough. Yeah, probably. And uh, wanted 
wanted to live his life and good luck to him. Yeah. Well, I hope he enjoys what they make come. I don't think he does. <laughs> I know he doesn't. Yeah, yeah I, know he I have doesn't. friends that have yeah. know him and yeah. George is a special kind of guy. And you think of how big Star Wars is, here we are, 25 years on from the last one, on, well, from the one we're talking about. Yeah. And that's a guy that, like, started in this diner yeah. in San Francisco. Yeah. Broke his leg. Yeah. Because you know, he was racing cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bought a little camera. And then very quickly realised he needed to be in utter control of it to, you know, to make it work. So he... So had his own effects company, his own sound, he had checked sound. What he did with the business was extraordinary. You know, when you're working on those movies, you know you're working on the biggest movie in the world, and yet it's an indie movie. Yeah. And, and there, there isn't 18 producers over there. It's, a, it's an amazing feeling. You think he saw himself more in um, Luke or anything when he was writing? Interesting. So no. I think he saw himself bizarrely was solo. Really? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I think if he, if he, he's probably all of those characters, but I think if he's anyone, I think he wrote it from Harrison Ford. It's, I've never heard. That's insane. George isn't as um, you know. George has got a proper edge to him. We only ever see that lovely little guy with the beard, but he's an edgy guy. I always thought he was just so like kind of quiet and non-confrontational. He he is, but in order to write that, you know, you think it's probably a fantasy, and no, I think I always saw it as Harrison Ford. So. Yes, thank you. Can I have some more? Thank you. Huh. I never ever would have thought you'd say that. I should have said Jar Jar. Yeah. Jar was he ever supposed to be a Sith Lord? <laughs> Jar Jar. Mm. Never heard that. Never heard that. There's like some fan rumor. Yeah, I never that. heard that. Was that Star he... Wars analyst? Yeah, it might have been. <laughs> well, no, because he gave Palpatine emergency powers. So everyone's like, oh, he's a Sith Lord. They're in on it. He was the apprentice. He wouldn't have known, though, that Palpatine, nobody knew Palpatine. No. Well, I wish he would have made the new ones. So do I. Okay, so we... I asked Dick about Jumper with Hayden and uh, Sam. Yeah, interestingly, the reason that they did that movie was when we finished Star Wars, I got given a script to direct. Best script I've ever read for Poker Night. And the deal was a producer gave it to me and said, if you can get the actors for that, you can direct it. Mm. And at that time, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. I mean, I, and I love this script. So after Star Wars, I took almost two years off yeah. to develop this script. Yeah. And I put everything in it that I've kept back. You know, all the all the cool shots yeah. that I've ever thought of yeah. were in this thing all the right music background music I'm all about that anyway I, not, I very nearly pulled it off so I, uh, I had it I spoke to Hayden to play his lead part he was a young cop he was perfect absolutely perfect yeah. for it he was hey you could have written it for Hayden I emailed Sam Jackson said and doing, you know, I might do this. Bless him. He said, I don't even need to read it. If you're doing it, I'll do it. Cool. He did then read it and loved it as yeah. well. And Chris Walken, I went to Chris Walken cool. and he also said, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. You know. So I, I was in. Yeah. And then uh, Hayden had a little bit of an issue over something and it didn't happen, you know. And I, that often happens, you know. You, yeah, yeah. you get. We were very close. We yeah. were two weeks away from. It was all set up with Icon. I think we're going to make it. Mel Gibson's company. And um, we were two weeks away, and then Hayden had to quit, and so it fell. O it fell over. But that's why they then did Jumper, 
because they were both available. They're, they're very difficult things, oh, see, is having yeah. actors available yeah. at the same time yeah. for your movie. And yeah. Thank you. So they were suddenly free without a movie and Jumper grabbed them. Cool, yeah. Yeah, people always joke that was Mace Windu's uh, revenge. <laughs> I suppose, yeah. I've never thought of it like that. But yeah, it's just such a shame that Poker Night didn't get made. It was, I mean, it did get made on a very small level by the writer. I haven't seen it. But it's your script? It's not my script. He, he, he went, Yeah, he went with his script. I, I had a very complicated script. Well, guys, pretty much done here we didn't film too much because we were just hanging out and having a laugh the whole time but there will be many more hangouts with nick when he's back in the states or maybe i'll come up there eh? yeah, yeah yeah so go check him out on his you got any social media so uh, check me out on no fuck off no don't even say that don't even give that guy fucking clout oh, man I love him. <sighs> he's got all the answers yeah see that's british humor us <laughs> canadians we canadians understand that but you might not. Anyways, um, yeah, go check them out. Gillard Stunts. Maholland, Kawanga. Here we are. Is this where you're dropping me off? No, no, no. no. I'm dropping you at Universal. Okay. Dropping theory at Universal. Right, Universal. You're staying in a posh hotel. Yeah, right. And, uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see you guys next time, and maybe we'll film more stuff. But you know how it is. You just want to hang out and talk, talk private stuff. So we'll see you in the next one. Hope you have a great day. Are you going to say it? Ciao! Gonna... No, you got to be cheesy. Oh, mm. arrivederci. No, you got to say, may the force be with you. May the force be with you. <laughs> I was hoping you'd say fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so just, Nick just dropped me off and uh, got some good news. I mean, that was an amazing time we had together. There was a ton that I didn't film simply because, man, we were just chilling out. I didn't want to put a camera in his face the whole time. And a lot of private stuff we were talking about, which I'll never air and talk about. Just, you know, two mates having fun. Um, that was cool. He's going to be choreographing Vader episode two and three, so surprise right there. Uh, go spread the word. And I had a really amazing time with him. I can't wait to see him again. Probably next time we meet, we'll be in New York or something in a little bit. And uh, it was really insightful to learn from him just the process of everything with Star Wars, with his life, with everything, every project he's worked on, and just shooting the shit, you know? Two guys having fun, so. I uh, hope you enjoyed the little bit of it. Stay tuned for the next collaboration we do when we hang out. Probably in New York, which I've never been. And I'd love to see you guys out there because there's a ton of you. And uh, yeah, well, see you later.